Hi, this is Mercedes from Surfing to Success, and I wanted to show you how to insert PNG files using PowerPoint. Um, a PNG file is just a picture file. I save most of my backgrounds, frames, and clip art, or if not all of my backgrounds, frames, and clip art as PNG files because it's a high quality file. Um, it's similar to a JPEG, just um, holds up a little bit better. So I'm going to start a new slide here, and I prefer to start with a blank layout. I'm using PowerPoint on my Mac, so yours might look a little bit different than if you're on a PC, but the basic ideas should be the same. So I'm going to go to Insert Picture, and then I'm going to choose a picture from a file. And I have several pictures from several um, of the things that I've made on my desktop. I'm going to choose something polka dot. I think we'll start with a background. Um, let's do the bright color. And if I click on one, I can see a little preview um, to see what I'm choosing. Um, if you are on a Mac, you can change the way that you see things here. And this particular one that looks like it has three columns is the one that will usually show you a preview. So these are a couple of my um, frames, actually. So I'll show you how to put a frame in. I chose a frame. I click Insert. Remember, I went to Insert Picture. So once I've chosen the one I like, I click Insert. And it will fill the screen because my screen is set um, this direction, and so is the file. The next one I'll show you will be a little different. So here I have a picture there. And if I want to write words, um, I can do that. Um, right now, I'm in the format picture area, and I don't really want to do anything to change the picture, so I'm going to click out beside the box to get my typical home, or I could have clicked on home. And I'll see here that it says text. So if I click there, I'm going to choose a text box. And I can put the text box wherever I like, but I can move it around later. So um, You can put your text box wherever you like, and you can um, type into it. As long as the cursor's blinking there, um, it's in the type mode. But if you click right on the outside of the box where I see that um, I have the four little arrows, now I've chosen all of it without having to select it. Um, and I can change the size and the font of my text. Um, I can also do that with... Um, the selection tool by clicking on it and filling up the whole thing or I can click on it and double click and click some extra times to fill it all up but I find the easiest way for me is just to click on the outside of the box where I see those four. Now um, I may have liked where I started but the text keeps going off to the side as I change it around so if I want to put the text right there in the center I can use a range and I'm going to um, align it. So I'm going down to align and I'm going to say align center and it will put it right in the center for me. Or I can say align middle and middle is from top to bottom and center is from right to left. I guess I already had it pretty close to the middle so you couldn't see a change there. Let me show you again. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what to do if you're inserting um, a picture that's a different direction from the slide you have set up. So I'm going to put a new slide in, and it came up blank because I changed my layout, and I'm going to choose a picture. Um, oh, these are frames again. I don't want frames. There we go. So here's some backgrounds I can tell because what it says right there and how I named them. Um, if I click on the different backgrounds, I can look at the previews till I see one that I like. Well, I don't know. Let's go with that one. And I hit insert. Now this background was um, positioned in a different direction when it was saved than the file size that I'm using now. You can change which direction you're in um, view by, via page setup. So some of them are, are what I call tall. I don't actually know the official name. And the other ones are landscape. Um, I have it set to landscape. So if the picture is tall, that's really not a problem. I have a couple options. I can click on it and then I can stretch it. 
But what happens there is the picture gets distorted. So if I do that, I'll end up with ovals rather than circles. If that's a look you're going for, that works. But if you want to keep the circles, one of the things that you can do is click on it and choose rotate and just turn it 90 degrees. It really doesn't matter with circles which direction you go. And now I can change it by pulling on a corner. Anytime I pull or stretch a side, it's going to distort the picture. If I use the corner, it's not. Another thing that you can do is hold the shift button down when you're, um, when you're pulling on the corner to make sure that everything stays completely equal. So now I've stretched it out to meet the size. But this particular background doesn't have a frame built in like the other one did. So what I can do is insert a shape there. Again, I'm in picture formatting, so I can click on the side or I can click home to go back to where my basic things are. I can also use the toolbar. If your pictures and your setup doesn't look exactly as mine, you can go and do this via insert as well. So you can insert a photo or a picture from file that way or from up here. I'm going to insert a shape right now. And I like the rectangle with the round edges. I'm just partial to that shape. So I'm going to click on that and then create something. Um, my theme is set to purple, so things come up purple for me all automatically. I just double clicked on the picture to change it. If I want it to be filled with white, I can do that. Um, if I want it to be filled with a color that's similar to what I have here, I can do that. It really is whatever color you want it to be. Uh, just for simplicity's sake, let's just pick a white one. And I put a black line around the outside. I can change the thickness of the line via weights, make it a little thicker. I can also change the type of line it is by picking something that's dashed. Uh, we'll just stick with that. Notice when I created my shape it wasn't in the middle. I can use that same alignment we talked about earlier. Align center is going to center it from left to right and align middle will center it from top to bottom. You may not always want things right in the middle but that's one way to do it. Um, I'm looking at my shape and I'm wishing that we're a little taller, so I'm just going to click on it and do that. And then I think I'll realign it again and see if I like the way it looks a little better. Maybe I want the whole thing to be a little bit bigger. I can click on the corner and then realign it again. It's really easy to, to play with it and make it exactly what you want it to be once you learn a couple basic steps. To type in the, type, uh, the text, I clicked outside again to go to home and I'm choosing a text box. Um, I could also choose word art. Um, I guess since I showed you a text box last time, I'll show you word art. It automatically pops up in the middle, but if I want to change anything, there are many options um, that are basic that I can just choose whichever one I like, or I can choose to add certain colors and lines using the buttons over here that look like the letter. That shows you that it has to do with the words. And the word art, um, you want it to be, um, including other fonts, or it could have different backgrounds. Um, there are endless options. Um, if you don't like the word art, once you put it in, you can click on it and hit delete, and it will go away. I usually use text boxes. Um, if you type in the middle of a white box, like I just did, you won't see what you typed. For some reason, inside these shapes, they always um, start with white. So if my background were a different color, you would see what I typed. But since I often use white, that frustrates me. There are a couple ways around this. One would be to click on the box and change the color um, of your letters. Another would be to try to select it, but that's hard to select something you can't see. Another trick that you can do is that anytime you try to put a text box into the middle of a shape, or you just click in the middle of the shape, it's automatically going to put it right in the middle. I don't always want my typing right in the middle, so what I do sometimes is I create a text box and I put it somewhere else and I type into the text box. And then once I've done that, I can click on it and drag it into the text box and put it wherever I want so I don't have to worry about um, it being right in the center and being difficult for me to format. This gives me a floating text box that I can move around easier. Um, you can change the font, the size, the color, um, any way that you want to. Oops. Hmm. There 
go. Not sure why that didn't work earlier. So I'm going to click on it, put it wherever I want. I can use the arrange. Now let's say that I wanted to add some sort of clip art to this. I use the exact same process that I did for the background and the background with a frame. I click picture from file and I choose a file that um, I have clip art in. I've created clip art and I have a bunch on here that I haven't formatted yet. Um, but I can put any of the clip art in there. I don't know, let's pick a sea animal just because it's right there. I can put an octopus in the middle of this. Um, and when I insert it, it's going to come out large because when I save my clip art, I try to maximize the quality that you have in case you want it to be large or small. But I can easily make it smaller to fit whatever it is that I want it to be. You can adjust it and all boxes basically the same. If you pull on a corner, it's going to keep the size and shape. If you um, pull on the top or the sides, it's going to change what it looks like and stretch it, which sometimes is what you want and sometimes isn't. This little green dot here, by the way, that's to rotate. So if I want it to go in a certain angle, I can change the angle. If you hold the shift button down while you're rotating, it actually goes to specific um, degrees rather than free floating. So if I just want to go a couple degrees, I can go for example, to 6.98 degrees. But if I hold the shift button, it will pick 15, 30, 45, the more typical degrees that you would want to see. Um, if I want to get rid of a picture, I just click on it and hit delete. Now, sometimes you might want to use clip art as a type of background. For example, I have clip art, um, school supply clip art, and you might choose to use a spiral notebook clip art, and let's make it a little bigger. You might choose to use that and then add a shape box to type into, just like we did with the other things. Or I might want to use something like, I don't know, composition book. And I can do the same thing. I can create um, a shape to put in the middle. And I can type into that if I want to. Um, if I want to move this around on my screen and I want the two boxes to stay together, that's called grouping. I can have one selected right now. And if I hold the shift down, I can select two. And then if I go to group, when I go to move this around, the two things will move together. I just created basically one object. Now let's say that I started to do this and I decided I really wanted a background behind it. I can change the order of things. I don't have to do them in a specific order. So if I change my mind later, I don't have to restart. I can just go click a picture from the file, insert a picture. Um, let's stick with polka dots today. I'm one of my polka hearts. Now I made these particular files 12 by 12 so that way if you wanted um, to keep them exactly the same you could make it a little bigger and I'm going to zoom out. You can keep the hearts exactly the same whether you're stretching it up or down um, and still have high quality because it was designed to be 12 inches wide. Um, if I hold the shift and I pull the corner, it can go off the side, and that's okay because it will only show what's on here. If I um, want to stretch the hearts in a different direction, they are going to change their shape a little bit. So it depends on what you're looking for. I'm going to go back, back to this. Now, right now, this is in front of everything that I did earlier, but all I have to do is go to reorder and I can send it backwards one thing at a time or I can just send it all the way to the back. And now I have something behind what I did. That can happen with any objects. And you can of course add multiple pictures into the same thing um, and you can move them around however you see fit. You just have to go to insert picture. Um, I get a lot of questions on my teacher notebook store and my teacher pay teacher store about how to use some of these things so I hope that this was helpful. Again, my name is Mercedes and I'm from Surfing to Success. I hope you enjoy creating 
fun, colorful products um, using some of mine or other people's PNG files. Thanks.